watching SpaceX Falcon Heavy's two side boosters ditching from the core after launch and guiding themselves back to Earth deserves to be on the bucket lists of many people, including NASA's scientist. Not by chance, a new entrant in rocketry, whose usefulness has always been doubted due to low market demand, can do things beyond the imagination of veterans. So what is the secret weapon behind Falcon Heavy's success? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. On June 25th, SpaceX has launched successfully the first Falcon Heavy mission of 2024 and the 10th for the rocket overall, namely the GOES-U weather satellite. The GOES-U is the fourth and final member of the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's GOES-R series of Earth-observing craft. The heavy lifter's two side boosters return to Earth as planned, touching down at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, which is next door to KSC, about eight minutes after liftoff. This homecoming created a whole different experience for onlookers than the launches of GOES-U's three sibling satellites, all of which soared into space on United Launch Alliance's Atlas V rocket, which is not reusable. The central booster did not come back safely on today's mission. The launch required it to burn so much of its fuel that it didn't have enough for a controlled return to Earth. And while you feel this is normal, let me tell you a story. Falcon Heavy never gets old. Each launch of this masculine rocket attracts a huge of public attention, even though six years have passed since its first launch, and its number of launches so far is just counted on your fingers. Clearly, its maiden launch in 2018 is a legendary event for many people. The hotel in the area is completely sold out. The parking lots are parked. The reason is very simple. This is not a typical day in Space Coast. Falcon Heavy at that time is the biggest rocket in the world. With 70 meters in height and 3.7 meters in diameter, it consists of three modified, strapped together first stages of SpaceX's workhorse Falcon 9 rocket. Contemporary rockets such as Russia's Soyuz is just 45.6 meters in height and 10.3 meters in diameter. Powered by nine Merlin 1D, generating more than 5 million pounds of thrust at liftoff, it is billed as the world's most powerful operational booster since NASA's Saturn V. Furthermore, the separation system that the workhorse rocket uses was something shocking. Elon Musk said before the rocket's maiden launch that the separation system that tosses off the side boosters never been tested before in space, so that's going to be a very big deal for that to work. Even so far, the sight of both rocket sides breaking apart from the core after liftoff has still stoked the viewers' emotions, and the SpaceX CEO is not exceptional. On July 1st, he shared a clip recording that surreal scene on X as a way to arouse pride. The successful first launch of Falcon Heavy was truly a blessing because it then paved the way for SpaceX's new era where they won lucrative contracts to launch the biggest satellite in the world. Indeed, a year after the successful demo flight, SpaceX had signed five commercial contracts worth from $500 to $750 million, meaning that it had managed to cover the development cost of the rocket, which was more than $500 million. Not to mention the orders did arrive before the incredible test flight which belonged to the 2012 first Falcon Heavy launch contract with DoD. Despite the skepticism about its demand on the market compared to SpaceX's Falcon 9, and the future rocket starship, Falcon Heavy is still able to generate solid revenue for SpaceX in the long term. Currently, it serves primarily for the government's billion-dollar missions, including those of NASA and the U.S. Space Force, which directly competes with the veterans like ULA, the nation's most experienced space launch company. So, is what Falcon Heavy has done over the years really interesting to you? I bet you will drop the heart emoji in the comments section below as a way to say yes. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel to motivate us to bring more interesting content. Okay, let's come back. So why did SpaceX's heavy rocket have such sustainable steps? First of all, Falcon Heavy is a very impressive rocket with modern technology and significant payload capacity. Moreover, it is at a much lower cost, under $100 million, than any rocket in the segment of heavy class vehicles, especially NASA's SLS, costing over $1 billion to launch. Dr. Greg Autry, the director of the Southern California Commercial Spaceflight Initiative, pointed to NASA's ambitious Lunar Gateway program, which is the agency's plan to return humans to the moon. It's a job, he said, Falcon Heavy is admirably suited to do. 
Falcon Heavy is the only rocket that's available to do that now at the best price. NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine, in a town hall meeting on April 1, 2019, highlighted Falcon Heavy's potential for the goal of landing humans on the moon by 2024. Between United Launch Alliance's Delta IV Heavy and SpaceX's Falcon Heavy, Bridenstine discussed one specific option involving a Falcon Heavy launching an interim cryogenic propulsion stage and Orion spacecraft that could be revisited in the future. There is a solution here that could potentially work for the future, he said. It would require time, it would require cost, and there is risk involved. But guess what? If we're going to land boots on the moon in 2024, we have time and we have the ability to accept some risk and make some modifications. He added, though, that the best option to getting to the moon as soon as possible remained the SLS and that NASA was continuing efforts to find ways to accelerate its development. Yet, in contrast to his expectations, NASA's Senate launch system, even though impressed people with its larger size and greater payload capacity than that of Falcon Heavy, is not down to Earth. It has been criticized for many years for delays and cost overruns. It is powered by yesterday's technology and brought about by yesterday's thinking. It bears a striking resemblance to NASA's previous rockets, like the expendable rocket Ares 5, which is the shining jewel of the Constellation program. Thus, compared to Falcon Heavy, SLS is the orders of magnitude obsolete. Unlike modern vehicles that aim for space exploration and commercializing spaceflight, SLS is built based on the political benefit. It was built with public funding and several private companies including Boeing, Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin, Aerojet Rocketdyne, etc. Manufactured the core rocket booster, SRBs, the Artemis Upper Stage, and Orion spacecraft. So private companies were very much involved, causing the chaos. NASA itself is not about space exploration or science. NASA is a job program for aerospace companies and employees in the states and districts of senators and congressmen who fund NASA. The more expensive something is, the longer it takes, the better. Whether it is of any use is secondary. Additionally, the lack of competitive rockets is also a boon for Falcon Heavy. United Launch Alliance's Delta IV Heavy retired, and the next generation Vulcan Centaur rocket has been facing a long-term delay. NASA's SLS rocket, as I said, lacks applicability, while Blue Origin's New Glenn are possible new entrant in the market of heavy lift vehicles, which is expected to take place no earlier than September 29, 2024. The Ariane 6 rocket is supposed to launch July 9 for the first time, but a French auditor published a blistering assessment of the European rocket that found this expendable launch system will not be a competitive or sustainable option. European officials have been suffering a painful period due to years of delays in the readiness for Ariane 6, some of Europe's most valuable missions, including the Euclid Space Telescope, and several Galileo satellites have already launched on the Falcon 9. You know, the concept of reusability, or launching, landing and launching again, has become a trademark for SpaceX. It benefits greatly in cutting the cost per launch but also requires a high launch cadence to maintain that advantage. Of course, it's not a big deal for SpaceX, because currently the company is leading the world in both launches and spacecraft mass delivered to orbit each quarter. The company alone keeps the U.S. ahead of China, the next closest geopolitical competitor, in satellite and astronaut launches. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.